Hey YouTube, I'm Happy Rooster, and uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm a little under the, under the weather today. I can't even say it. <laughs> uh, so sorry for the sounds or uh, me tripping over my words. It's gonna happen. Uh, but I'm making kind of a crazy video today. I've been following a user named Metal Jesus Rocks. Um, if you don't know about him, he's a up and coming, really successful reviewer um, of video games and. I will definitely post his information in the description box so you guys can check him out. Uh, his content is uh, educational, knowledgeable, he's very entertaining, and he's a fellow rocker. So definitely need to help this guy out and uh, get him some uh, subscribers. So, you know, like all 46 of mine. <laughs> no, but uh, he actually had uh, trouble locating a couple of games, and we've been talking about music and mainly Dream Theater um, <laughs> back and forth. So I wanted to help him locate these games. And uh, also give some donations he doesn't know about. And uh, Nintendo 64 is one of my favorite uh, game systems of all time. So I wanted to give my parting words with these things. And uh, <laughs> wow, this is this is getting creepy. Uh, so let's get to it. This is actually I apologize I apologize apologize for this donation because it's a uh, <laughs> God I can't talk. It's probably like the crappiest donation ever, uh, just by the condition of it. Um, but here we go, uh, David and Brenda present Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's pretty obviously used, uh, I don't know who decided, well, I know who decided to write their name on it, but why? Because, uh, let's face it, if these things are lost, I don't think they would ever know to return it to David and Brenda, because they don't give their last name or address. So, uh, if you write on your game... Make sure you put some more vital information. <laughs> so, sorry, Metal Jesus. Uh, I already have a copy of Ocarina of Time, but it's the one that I ended up getting like on my 13th birthday when I got my Nintendo 64, and uh, it was a it was a good gift. Okay, we're getting too sentimental here. Uh, here's another kind of crappy donation, but it was a fun game. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey, uh, which someone took the liberty of writing that on the top. Maybe it was Wayne Gretzky himself. We'll never know. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Halky. I'm sure that's supposed to be a C, but... So, the only two uh, donations that are kind of crappy. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> this one's Chameleon Twist, and I don't remember a lot about it. Um, I remember reading about it maybe towards the launch of the 64. Is that correct? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know how I got it. It's probably one of those distant relative aunt and uncle things. Like, here you go, Merry Christmas. We didn't know what else to get you. But it may be a cool game. I should have given it a chance. I know I gave Lego Racers a chance, and it was phenomenal. Uh, crappy graphics and, like, screen tear and collision detection effects and just the whole racing on a Lego cart kind of felt strange. Um, but you get to build your own car, and <laughs> that's what matters most. And it was really great. I loved it. Uh, it's really entertaining. And uh, Metal Jesus, you will have fun with this one, I promise. Iggy's Wrecking Balls. Um... I can tell you what it sounds like, but I can't tell you what, why this this green goblin is getting chased by this pink-haired pigtail thing. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with this game. Probably never played it. Uh, Quest 64. Mixed reviews. Here, let's get a closer look. Mixed reviews about this one. Obviously got it at EB Games or something. It's got all these stickers all over it. Um, but this game I thought was really hard. I actually played it twice, and I got to around the same point, which was this forest, and then there was this boss in this forest, and I could never uh, beat it, and um, I forgot what I was going to say. But tough game. Um, strange game, too. Character development, not so great. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Brian and his little haircut and, uh, <laughs> and his quest, but it, I was really compelled to finish it. And uh, I'm done talking about this game. So Metal Jesus, uh, try out Quest 64. Pretty good RPG for the 64, and it's and it's unique. And I respect them for uh, you know trying to go out on a limb and do something different. Uh, NHL 99. Um, hockey games are best played on the PS2, in my opinion. Uh, 64. I mean, obviously we didn't have that option back then, but uh, okay game. Mario Party 2, fun shenanigans to be had on Mario Party 2, so always fun. Uh, get going there, it's a little dirty. Uh, NBA Hang Time, I uh, get in the sports mood here and there. Let me move these games out of the way. And uh, I was trying to find a game kind of like NBA Jam with that same kind of nostalgic feel to it, and this is probably as close as it gets on the 64. 
but uh, doesn't quite cut it for me. Um, NBA Jam will always be uh, the greatest basketball game to me. Oh, and uh, the last of the 64 games, by the way, is uh, Duke Nukem Zero Hour. And this is the first Duke Nukem I really picked up. Um, I had Duke Nukem 3D on the uh, 64, but I like Duke Nukem Zero Hour better. And it's one of the first uh, third-person shooters, uh, Duke Nukem style. Uh, for some reason, that didn't sound <laughs> like it was supposed to. Like, I had it in my mind, but it just... Uh, but anyway, basically, you, uh, you go through all the levels, and, uh, of course, and uh, you're going... You're jumping back and forth through these time portals, so you'll end up, you know, in the Western days and uh, in the Victorian uh, era, and it's it's a really cool game. And there's a lot of weapons. I mean, there's a ton of weapons, and the multiplayer is really fun. Um, there's laser trip wires you can set up and, and trick your friends and everything, and uh, it's just a really fun game. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, so that's getting donated as well. Um, I had two copies of Goldeneye. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure who's a collector already has Goldeneye. He probably has like 14 copies of Goldeneye. So I'm going to keep them because I'm not sure which one has the 007 mode, mode unlocked and I worked really hard for that. <laughs> so I'm going to be stingy and keep that one and I'm also going to keep my Ocarina of Time. Um, the ones that he was having trouble locating were Rogue Galaxy and uh, another, another one I'll get to. But uh, Rogue Galaxy actually I played um, in the absence of my 360 it red rings and I was uh, stuck with my good old trusty PS2 so I picked up this game and I was really skeptical because I didn't like sci-fi's or like the space setting and this game changed everything for me it's an excellent game um, great character development uh, amazing combat uh, you can create your own weapons by mixing them together and stuff um, it, it's just a great game the graphics are phenomenal too for a PS2 title um, one of the best RPGs um, on the PS2, if not probably my favorite RPG on the PS2. So, gonna donate that. And the other one was Wild Arms 5 that he was looking for, and this one is an actually interesting case. Um, it was a new-to-use conversion, meaning that it sat on the shelf for so long, uh, the store just changed it to the used games, and it sat on the shelf still. So it's still sealed up, it's still brand new, but I got it for the used price, and that makes me happy. <laughs> so, I'm sure he'll like that too. Everyone's happy. And then I'm going to throw in this, uh, since he's a fellow rocker, and any of you guitarists out there, this is a Jazz 3 pick. And Jazz 3 are the, let me see if I have the, the regular picks too. I don't even know if I carry regular picks anymore. Jazz 3 are the best picks around. Uh, yeah, here's a regular pick. That's a, that's a Dunlop, and uh, it kind of has the script stuff on it. If you're a guitarist, you want to avoid using this. Um, the reason why, and this is this is totally off the subject, so sorry, but I want to go I want to go over this. This is very important to me. If you're holding the pick like this, like I do, I don't hold it like that. Uh, I hold it between the uh, the forefinger and the thumb. And uh, this look how much material is hanging off. So if you're thinking when you strike the strings, there's a lot of resistance there. It, the pick has to go through you know, I don't know, almost almost half an inch of material. Um, you know, when it's hitting the strings. Now when you're holding the Jazz 3, there's much less resistance. Um, you can kind of, that's choking up on it a lot, but if you're shredding um, or doing sweeps or learning any of that, um, it's the absolute best pick um, that I've found so far. There's like tortoise shell picks and all these uh, <laughs> crazy stuff, but uh, actually a uh, John Petrucci, Petrucci, who is by far my favorite guitarist of all time, uh, has used these picks before. Mark Tremonti, uh, who I've actually met, has used these picks and it's just a great pick so I'm gonna send him one of these and let him check it out if he doesn't already know and uh, that's pretty much it guys um, so hopefully you enjoy the video uh, I didn't really give a great review on all of them because it's been so long that I haven't even remembered uh, how the games play or anything so uh, hopefully you enjoyed it uh, Metal Jesus check him out and uh, have a good day everyone thanks